Damn, Daniel. Now these are my total current favorite features to show people. It uh, doesn't matter if you are new to Premiere Pro or uh, old school experienced user, I bet you one of these five or all of these five are gonna blow your mind. Let's jump in. Okay, so the first tip is not even the first tip. It's like a bonus first tip. Um, so I've got a blank project open. I've got two files. You can drag it straight into the timeline. Did you know that? It'll create a sequence based on them, okay? And if they get in the wrong way, you can grab one, hold the command key down on a Mac, control key on a PC, and you can switch them around. So we've got a sequence, we've got these two bits of footage, and this brings up my first and probably most favorite feature to stun the Premiere Pro audience is color matching. Let me show you. Now, color matching is when you've got two different shots. They need to look like they were shot at the same time and connect. They're either shot on different cameras or different lighting conditions. Imagine if there was a way you could do it automatically. Okay, to make it work, put your playhead where you want the color to be dumped on top of. So I want this one to be put on top of this one. Okay, so I've got my cursor in here. Let's go to Window. Let's go to Lumetri Color. Uh, toggle down until you find the one that says Color Wheels and Match. Click on it. Click Comparison View. Uh, make Comparison View bigger so that we can see it here on the screen. Just make sure you can toggle this one. Okay, you want this one called Shot Comparison. Basically, if you see all that junk, you're in the right spot. And then drag it along to reference from somewhere in here. So this is my reference. This is where it's going. Now click this magic apply match button here in the Lumetri color panel. You ready? How good is that? Oh my goodness, FX on, off, oh, so good. On to number two. The second, second top feature for Premiere Pro is this one, sound. Uh, it's a double, we're gonna balance it and remove the echo, mainly because the footage I've got was recorded in a kitchen. I record in a kitchen, so much echo. Okay, so I've got three tracks, me talking in a kitchen, which sounds terrible. I've got some, let's have a quick listen. Let's solo this. Kia ora. Uh, today, I'm gonna take you through my way. Echoey. I've got some ambient noise to make me sound like I'm in an interesting cafe. You hear that? The walla walla. That's the technical word. Okay, and I've got some music. Oh, so good. Love that track. Anyway, to make this work, to balance them all out, imagine if there was an option where you could say you are just dialogue and actually go to loudness and say auto match dialogue across multiple different clips and get you to the right decibel level. Let's have a look. Do you see a jump? Okay. Undo, redo, it jumps it up and it's gonna bounce in our kind of uh, negative today, six. My way. Let's turn the music off, let's solo this. Okay, I'm choosing fonts. Oh, so good. Echoey is still terrible. Okay, uh, today I'm gonna... But it's balanced. Let's look at this one. We can say you my ambient background noise and watch it. Actually, you gotta hit auto match. <laughs> and that predicts what it's gonna be for the ambient noise. Let's have a look at music. You have music, and let's go to auto match. And it assumes your music wants to be a little bit quieter. Unless, of course, it's a music video, but it's not. Now, why are these good? Mainly because the auto match will look at the type of audio and adjust. And it gets super flash when it does things like this. Say, this music. Imagine if it could do this. Imagine if it could duck underneath dialogue. Tick the box on, hit generate keyframes, and have a look down here. Oh, so there's keyframes. It dipped down when I started talking on this track. Let's have a listen. I'm gonna take you through my way of choosing fonts. Kia ora. It dipped down on its own. Now a little bonus tip here. Ambient noise is, in this case, too loud. Today, so I'm, I'm gonna, gonna play it, and we use the fonts. square brackets on my keyboard, and just, can you see, I can dip it down. I'm 
Square brackets next to your P key and you can lower or raise the volume yeah, while it's playing. My way of choosing fonts. Kira. There you go. Okay, so we've balanced the sound. Now let's remove the echo. Let's solo this. Uh, Sounds bad. Today I'm going to take you through my way. Don't record in your kitchen. Okay, with it selected, we've got dialogue and now I can say let's remove echo. I call it echo, you call it echo. Sound engineer is going to get really annoyed because it's actually called reverb. We're okay with that though. Remember reverb. Of choosing fonts. Let's have a listen. Kia ora. Uh, today I'm going to take you through my Ooh, let's have a look with it off. Way of choosing fonts. Let's have a look with it on. Today I'm going to take you through my way of choosing fonts. Today I'm going to take you through my way of choosing fonts. Oh, it's so good. All right, that's my amazing sound feature. It was a couple of features. But anyway, let's move on to feature number three. Feature number three, fixing skin. Uh, the best way I know how. Let me show you. All right, skin tones. This one here is too red, I can kind of see. This is because I am, I'm not going to say lazy, but kind of lazy. Setting up my camera, moving it around for different shots. I don't set the white balance properly. I figure I'll just fix it in post. The skin tone can be tough, especially when you are trying to balance it across different shots. Okay, because you can just click on it, open up Lumetri Color, go to Basic Correction, go, oh, it just needs to be a little more blue. How blue? I'm not sure. We're in the air. Does it, does it need more green? It's green. Double click them to clear them up. Okay, so you need some sort of like benchmark to help you use some of these tools in here in Lumetri Color. So this is the feature. It is called Window and it's under Lumetri Scopes. We are going to right click it and turn off Waveform if you've got it. Okay, and turn on Vector Scope YUV. Now it looks, if we scrub through, can you see it updates over there and show me the different colors? Bits of red, bits of blue, bits of cyan. The skin tone kind of indicator should be where the skin tones run along. Problem is we can't really tell because there's lots going on. So what we're going to do is with it selected down here, we're going to go to our fixed controls. We are going to find our opacity and we're going to click on this little circle one. Okay, and we're going to make a little circle around my well, you're looking for a, bunch of, a bit of skin. You could use anything. Neck. I'm going to use my forehead because I have a big forehead. I have what my little brother dubbed very early in my life. My five head because it's bigger than everyone else's forehead. Thank you, Ben. One of your many gifts. Anyway, you want to find a little bit of skin that is consistent. No stubble, no eyebrows. And then go back to our Lumetri scope. And you will see we can only see this bit. And you look, it's not on the line. It should be with my pale skin, okay? It should be kind of around there, about a third of the way up. If you've got darker skin, a little bit further towards the center here of saturation. This is no saturation, this is way too saturated. So mine is kind of too saturated because it should be about a third along and it should be on this line. So now we get to fix it with a little bit more science. So temperature here, if I drag it left, right, that's not working, okay? So it's not that slider, it's this one here, look. Ooh, away from magenta towards green. Sometimes it's a combination of both. Okay, so I'm along the line, which is great, but the saturation needs to come in. Actually, let's turn our effect off, because remember, this is an A. This is not going to get you perfect every time, but it's going to get you consistent and very close to where you want to be. So I'm going to turn the uh, opacity mask off. Let's turn the effects on and off. Way better. Saturation is, mine's not too bad, but that's going to be one of the problems you will find. And often saturation, I don't do too much with the Lumetri scope, okay, or this vector scope here. I'll just do it by eyeball. But again, if you want consistency across shots, you can do it this way. So I'm not, I'm going to go to a handy trick. We can just lower the saturation of everything. It's not what I want to do though. What I want to do is go to this curves option that you've never been into and go to not RGB, you want to look at hue saturation curves or HSC, which nobody but, but me and Adobe call it. Okay, and we're looking for hue plus the saturation. We're gonna say, I want to go, I wanna pick a hue and then play around with saturation. I'm gonna use my eyedropper and say forehead color. And there it goes, let's pick my forehead color. It gets close. You can say, I want to lower it down. Okay, or lift it up. Okay, so that's a handy trick. You might have to expand your scope of like what you consider color, you know, the skin color. Okay, drag it all the way up and all the way down should give you a little bit of an indication of what's being picked. I'm in a brown room, <laughs> lots of wood, so I'm affecting a lot of this as well, but let's turn the whole effect on and off way nicer. 
Let's click off, click back on. Look at that handsome dude with normal looking skin. The other good thing about the vector scope and actually turn them all of the scopes on and make sure that the clip mix is on as well and all bouncing up and down so that when somebody walks past behind you, you don't know what half the graphs do, but they won't either. And you'll look like a total pro. It's very important to look like a video editor. <laughs> At least that's what I do. Number four is the hidden gem. That is the essential graphics panel. That panel that you kind of know and you should learn better uh, is amazing. What's also amazing about it is that there are a bunch of free uh, templates like these lower thirds here that are just built into it and you can start using for free. It gets even better when you want a premium uh, Adobe stock license, but these are pretty cool. Let me, uh, actually let's do one together and I'll show you where they are at least. Okay, they're all hidden under window, essential graphics, and then you can go to defaults to browse normally. Uh, instead of my templates, go to Adobe Stock, tick on the little free button. Now, they change this all the time. Sometimes free disappears, and then I get in trouble. Have a look around, you might find it. It might be gone. They might have turned all the free off, but there's some good stuff in there at the moment. Have a look. Uh, so I'm gonna do lower thirds. There are all sorts of different kinds of things in there. Look at them, 10 pages of them. Find one you like, click hold, drag it onto your timeline. It'll install the fonts that are required from Adobe Fonts eventually. Give it some time. This one's set for HD instead of 4K. So I'm gonna right click it and set frame size. Look at this. Sweet lower third <laughs> and creepy wink. Uh, if you select on them, they're all a little bit different, but you can see in here, there's a lot of control. There you go, and you can adjust it. Let's do one more while you're watching. So good and free, all the timings being done. It's not just lower thirds, you can find cool things like these where YouTubers are big in their audience to like and subscribe. It's so embarrassing. Let's get scratching. Now the last feature, feature number five, is something for those people out there who whose life goal is to really not really understand how bit rates are when you're exporting your videos. You might be out there going, hey, I know what a bit rate is. And I set it to 10 every time. Uh, if you're like that and you're like, I know there's more to it, okay? Mm, frame rates and resolution all should adjust your bit rate. Uh, you're in luck for this next feature. It is called adaptive bit rate. And it is a newish setting from Adobe that will look at your original format and just tell you, this Dan is the perfect bit rate or quality for your export. That's a shortened version of it. Let me show you it. It's our friend, this sitting here when you're exporting, okay, our H.264 and you're like, hmm, 10 feels good. Maybe it should be, seems pretty low, but what about 70? <laughs> <laughs> what about six? Is 10 good for everything? What if my frame rate 60 frames per second? Aha! What you can do is you can go to your presets and instead of using some of these first ones, use Adaptive High. It will look at your existing uh, sequence, your frame rate, the size, 4K HD, and suggest something. Look at this. What have we got here? 10.8. We were pretty close. But it will change depending on your actual content, which is handy to know. Plus, after a while, you get a sense of what is a good setting for the types of footage you work with or shoot. Now, this is kind of via Media Encoder. The same thing applies if you're using Premiere Pro, maybe the new version, okay, under Export. You'll see it in here. Adaptive. Use Adaptive. It's even jammed into the handy little Quick Export. Look at that. If you ever click that button, super helpful. Go up here, Match Source, Adaptive High Bitrate. You are welcome. It helps me at least, and I hope it will help you. So that is my top five features for Premiere Pro. Uh, what do you think? Hopefully there was something useful in there. Um, if you were like, wow, there was some good stuff. Guess what? There's more. Uh, if you are interested, I've got a full course, or well, two full courses. For Premiere Pro, there's Premiere Pro Essentials and Advanced. They're about 15 hours each and jam packed full of goodness. So depending on which level you're at, uh, check out the links in the description for those. And um, what you'll see in front of you right now is some of the stuff that we do in that course. So if you're new, experienced, self-taught, uh, these courses will get you like right from Premiere Pro Zero all the way to Premiere Pro Hero, I promise. When you sign up for those courses as well, you get access to my other great courses. I got loads. 
uh, at no extra cost, uh, you'll get access to the After Effects, my Photoshop, Illustrator, there's InDesign, XD, Figma, Webflow, WordPress, Dreamweaver, <laughs> and VS Code. So uh, check out the links for those in the description. That same subscription gives you access to the certificates for those courses as well, as well as my uh, exclusive members only podcast. Plus you get help from me and my amazing teaching assistants. Uh, if you have questions you need answering, also, one last thing is uh, this series here, uh, Dan's top five uh, features in, you just watched Premiere Pro, there'll be an After Effects one, there is uh, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign XD, uh, all those ones I described earlier. Check out links for those in the description as well. And Dan, why did I change shirts halfway through? Uh, it was to avoid inconsistency. It was for your benefit the story and keep the flow going. It was raining, very hard outside, so I was like, oh, I won't get this all wet because I'll have to stop the video and explain why I'm more wet. Uh, so I changed shirts and I forgot to change back, creating more inconsistent video. You're welcome. Um, all right, that's it. Awkward ending. Ready, city, go. Bye. I'll see you in another video.